Today, mortgage stress to the moon. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, World's latest post covering finance and problem news with a distinctively Australian flavour. The latest mortgage stress data to the beginning of April 2020 tells a sorry story as the virus impacts its jobs and incomes. Overall stress, as measured in our surveys, rose from just 32% in February to 37.2%. This means that another 200,000 households have slipped into stress and the total rose to more than 1.2 million households. Assuming unemployment rises to around 10%, even allowing for the various government support mechanisms, we expect mortgage stress to rise to more than 41% by August. And recent Treasury modelling indicates that 10% is all but baked in, and it's worth reflecting that even if the virus were contained, falls in unemployment after a recession tends to be gradual. As they say, the economy may take an escalator down, but you have to take the stairs up to the recovery. And a reminder, we define mortgage stress in cash flow terms. If a household's income on an ongoing basis is below their outgoings, including mortgage repayments, then they are in stress. And we've also taken account of those households who have postponed their repayments in agreement with their lender and exclude them from the stressed cohorts until repayments commence. And an estimated 310,000 households so far have sought this relief and more will, I suspect, as things continue to deteriorate. Across our household segments, stress remains concentrated in young growing families, which includes a number of recent first-time buyers. More than 70% are in stress. Other segments also appear in our surveys, and some are in more affluent segments, often with more complex financial situations, multiple mortgages, and multiple incomes. A significant proportion of the uplist this month came from these more affluent groups. Those households have never experienced financial pressures like these before, and many are frankly desperate. Across the states, the highest proportion of households in stress are in Tasmania, thanks to a combination of recently rising prices and stubbornly flat incomes. Victoria has the largest absolute count, closely followed by New South Wales. Western Australia has the largest proportion of households risking default at around 4%, simply because the economy there has been sluggish for years. And we know over time high stress levels leads to higher default levels. This should be a warning for those on the East Coast. Looking across the regions, Melbourne, then Sydney and Brisbane contain the largest counts of those in stress. But it should be noted that some of the highest proportions are in regional areas, for example, in New South Wales, the Hunter and Central Coast regions. Looking across the postcodes, Melbourne postcode 3805, which includes Fountain Gate and Narra Warren, has the highest count of stressed households at more than 7,000, followed by Ballarat 3350 and postcode 3037, including the areas around Hillside and Sydenham in Victoria. Sydney postcode 2567 has the highest count in New South Wales, followed by another Victorian postcode 3029, which includes Hoppers Crossing, then Pakenham at 3810. These areas have some common characteristics among these regions, and among other high-stress postcodes more generally, they are characterised by zones of high urban development, with many newly built properties often on small blocks. They often include limited infrastructure and transport links, and incomes there are generally above average, and mortgages larger, relatively speaking, to income. High levels of migration are also concentrated in these areas. This is a heat map for Melbourne, which highlights the hot spot stress is not uniformly spread across the area. Now, as always, we recommend that households draw up a budget to prioritise their spending and consider cutting back on non-essential spending when stressed. And in the current environment, I think that's a very important thing to do. Of course, banks have an obligation to assist under their hardship schemes and they may postpone repayments in the light of current events for a limited period and might have advice about loan restructuring. However, for some, their financial situation is getting more precarious, which is why we're seeing a rise in households trying to sell their properties 
even as market values fall. And you can see our earlier post on stressed sales if you want more information about that. We'll update our mortgage stress data again in a couple of weeks and we suspect that the trends will continue to be adverse and many households unfortunately still have yet to come to terms with the recent economic changes. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.